<laughs> All right, guys, go to Boy 32 here. Check it out. We're sitting out here at the range. This is Mifflin County Sportsman's Association. It's one of my absolute favorite places. And yes, it is open for business, which is awesome. Got a lot of cool people out here. We're shooting today. All right, so what are we here to do? We're here to talk about this guy right here, the EDJ or the Everyday Joe, man. Oh, yeah, this thing's bad to the bone. Look at it right here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about the individual parts. I'm going to go to my website, kb32tech.com. We'll go ahead and put a parts list on that thing. Probably expect that to be up and running by midday tomorrow at some point. Uh, so what is this thing? It is... Uh, an everyday Joe AR-15. I mean, this is about as economical of a home built that you can actually get. I mean, if you're going to go cheaper than this, you're probably going to end up having to buy something from PSA uh, that's pre-assembled, that kind of thing. But what I wanted to do was actually put together a full-blown AR-15 parts, individual parts, and keep them as economical as, as possible, yet uh, reliable, and they are a performer. So we don't know if it's a performer yet, but we will. So, I mean, Yankee Hill, Phantom, uh, muzzle brake. We've got a ballistic advantage uh, government profile barrel. We've got a Spikes Tactical low profile gas block, UTG. This is their handguard. This is their 4514 or whatever. I did a review on that. Running a PSA uh, premium bolt, magnesium phosphate, I believe. Uh, and for the money, I think that's probably the best bolt out there. I know who makes them. Uh, some people may disagree with me, but I've never had an issue out of them. But again, beware the man with one gun. I said that earlier to one of the guys earlier. And uh, the reason being is because the guy who shoots one gun knows that gun inside and out. We've got a Anderson. Uh, this is their uh, stainless steel lower parts kit with the trigger. And i tell you what, in the light, light trigger, we did a review on that. I just found whatever stock was laying around and then a Magpul grip. But priced out, I bought all the stuff to put this rifle together with the exception of the lower, which I had. But you got to think $49 for an Anderson lower. That's pretty typical. This whole rifle, if I were to buy everything, I bought all the parts and pieces at Big Daddy Unlimited. Uh, you'll find a <clears throat> link to the membership on that thing, uh, $530, including if I were to pay $50 uh, for the lower. $530 for all of this. Not bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the whole process of what I do when I test out a rifle. I've actually got a camera down at the 100-yard uh, range. We're going to check for accuracy. Not really fair to check, check for accuracy when you're only about 50 rounds into it. And I've got 60 rounds sitting here, and that's what we're going to do. <clears throat> and it will probably visit this thing down the road and see how better off it does. Well, anyway... Uh, one of the things we'll do is I'm going to check for lock back. That will it lock back off the initial round. So what we're going to do is, is I load up a one magazine, and I'm going to check one for the ejection pattern uh, to see if it's ejecting three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, or even at the camera right there. And then we're going to check for lock back. If it locks back, I know we're good. If we're getting a good ejection pattern out to the side, I really don't care as long as it's going that way. If I hit the guy next to me, I'm good to go. So here we go. Well, no. No lock back on me right there. <laughs> so we'll have to figure out what's going on right there. May have a gas block, misalignment issue, not sure. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I want to see if it will cycle. So, being cycle, I mean, go ahead, eject the round, and push another round in, and so forth. So, here we go. Yep, it'll do that. We <clears throat> are just not locking back. I wonder... Hmm. You know what? Let's try a different magazine. Sometimes that, that has something to do with it. So what we'll do, let's go ahead and pull these rounds out of here real quick. And the idea is we'll go ahead and punch a couple more rounds down range, and then I'm gonna put that scope on it, and then we're gonna check for accuracy. All right, she locked back. So now I know it's a magazine problem. Okay, so now what we're going to do 
is I'm gonna go ahead and mount the scope on here and we're gonna check, uh, get it zeroed in and we'll check for accuracy. Just for your enjoyment, I went ahead and I have employed the help of the Tachycam on this thing. And uh, we'll go ahead and get this thing on. So I gotta get her set up. Right, here we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is start off by doing this. I've got the Tachycam hooked up to the uh, scope. This is the uh, Primary Arms Aurora scope. And uh, I'll tell you what, I let the battery die. <laughs> This is six power. Uh, most of the time, if I'm checking for accuracy on a rifle scope, I'm gonna go ahead and probably uh, use a higher optic. But uh, again, this is a uh, military profile. So what we'll do, and this is always fun, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot a uh, round uh, right there somewhere, if you guys can see that. And I will Go ahead and bring the turret to the impact in the dirt. And I like using dirt because I can actually see where it hit. So here we go. All right. I'm going to come up and over. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick an item in the dirt. See that little, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. No, you can't see it. But there's a little piece of uh, clay pigeon there, and I'm going to shoot at that. Oof. Went that way up down. Here we go. Okay. Well, look at there. We got locked back. All right. So we're pretty close. Now, well, let's do this. Now this is 55 grain, guys. I'm not trying to shoot 77 grain or anything super expensive through this because that's not the purpose of this rifle. This is not a precision gun. So let's go ahead, we're gonna put one round in the middle of that thing and let's see where it lands. Here we go. Okay, let's go ahead and do a couple more. There we go. All right, now I'm bringing it around. Yeah. All right, didn't get locked back that time. Okay, so now we are somewhat on target. Now let's do this. We're gonna, and again, we gotta build up some copper in that barrel prior to it really bringing it into its own. And again, every barrel has a different harmonic so a lot of times you are gonna see different things happen with different bullets that kind of thing all right put a couple more rounds at top target there a little high Okay, so we're having fun. Let's go ahead and bring that point of impact down. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, rifle is clear, I'm gonna sit it down. Now that's, that's the process, that's what I do to bring a rifle in. Now what we'll do is let's, uh, let's engage some targets out to distance and see how it fares with the uh, Aurora reticle. All right, I like using a tripod, a bipod for this kind of shooting. That's 300. Some stuff out there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Let's go ahead and get us a mag. Somebody's down there having some fun. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hit that target at three right there. 
I don't know, you can see it. That's an impact. Let's do that again, that was fun. Yep. See that red target right there? It's a 200 yard target. Oh yeah, I like this rifle. Uh, 300. There's a 400. We're impacting. There's a 500. Oh my God. There's six. I can't tell if I'm hitting that or not. Let's bring it on down to the 300 again. This thing is spanking it. Oh, look. And that all, whoa, what is this? Uh-oh. Let's go ahead. Right side column, middle target. Three hundred again. All right. <laughs> well, guys, that's it. Everyday Joe. Um, what? Oh, what I was going to do was I was going to weigh it and show you some other things. Uh, let's do this. Go ahead and hit the pause button on that. The uh, trigger pull on this guy. Five pounds, 13 ounces. Also, the rifle, I weighed it beforehand and uh, had my scales right here, but we got one sided. Uh, six pounds, 4.3 ounces naked. And I tell you what, man, uh, I'm impressed. It's overall a great build, solid rifle, and uh, I would have no problems, well, recommending each one of these parts. Sometimes you're gonna find some parts that are cheaper than others. Uh, one of the things that I would definitely go with is a, uh, a good bolt carrier group, a good gas block, make sure it's steel, a good flash mitigator right there, and a great hand guard and a good trigger, and a good buffer, and a good lower, and a good upper, and a good charging handle, and a good scope. Good rifle. Have no problems with this thing. Now, uh, we are going to be starting a new rifle build here in the next couple of weeks. And I know a lot of people wanted me to uh, start working on pistols. So we'll be starting to uh, pay attention to the pistol guys and going from there. But anyway, guys, this is all about it, man. The EDJ uh, Everyday Joe, $530 for the whole build as it sits. Minus the scope and any uh, backup iron sights. But anyway, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless men, women in uniform. 24-7 for our freedom. This freedom is not free. It's good boy 32. I'm out. And I'm talking about those guys who fight for our Constitution as it was written by our founding fathers. Y'all be good. I'm out of here.